Hi everyone, this is Julie Bruns. Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. I want you to thrive and be happy, peaceful, and content, no matter where you are on your journey. This podcast shares stories that will show you how it can be done, no matter what your circumstances. You'll be inspired and come away with a new spark of an idea. Never forget, anything is possible. New episodes are released every Wednesday. Subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. This helps others find our content and get happier sooner. To possibility and the end. So welcome to this episode, everyone, uh, of the Peace and Possibilities podcast. My guest is Emily Williams. And Emily and I connected through my, who I consider now my friend and um, gosh, he was a coach for me and he's been in, um, I've been in some of his programs, Wayne, Dr. Wayne Purnell. And um, he knows what I do. And he said, Julie, you need to meet Emily. And this podcast is all about people who love what they do. And he's like, she'd be awesome. So um, I believe him <laughs> and I trust him. And so I'm like, well, if he says, if he thinks that, then it must be true. So that's why you're here today. And thanks for joining. And I'm looking forward to talking to you. Oh yeah. I'm so excited. Wayne is a dear friend of ours and I really respect him. So if he says we should meet, we should probably meet. Yes. I love that. That's, that's how it works, right? Those are the best introductions anyways. Okay. So let's start with, I don't, I only know a little bit about you and that's what I saw from your website in the, in the brief um, summary Wayne gave of, me, of you to me. So um, he's like, she has this great company and she does all this great work. And I was like, okay. So I went on your website and I, it's, it's called I Heart My Life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so first of all, you're now your, your, your own, you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur. Did you, how did you start off? What did you study or what did you, what were your first couple of jobs and what got you to where you are today? Like, did you think you'd be doing this 20 some years ago or however old you are? Yeah. So my story is a little bit different. No, I didn't always think I would be doing this. I didn't really know about the world of coaching, at least in the way that I do it until in my late twenties. So I basically started out with a psychology degree and I went to school in Ohio where I'm from. And I always thought I would go and get a master's and then I would start my own practice and that would be my path. Mm. And little did I know life had other plans for me. And after graduation, I actually applied to about 12 schools around the United States. I traveled to all of them just to get a feel for the campuses and figure out what was the right fit for me. And I actually landed on Northwestern in Chicago. Yeah. And so I know you're there right now. So and smart. So smart of you. It's one of my favorite cities in the United States. And so I thought, you know, why not just go to Chicago? We've been going there since I was a little kid. It's close to Ohio, all of that stuff. It ticked yeah. a lot of boxes. But as I was driving there, well, my mom was driving and I was in the pass passenger seat. I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach, like this was not the right fit for me. So we were literally going to find an apartment and we actually ended up turning the car around and we went back to Ohio. So needless to say, I did Oh my gosh. Well, wait, stop right there. Yeah. The fact that you felt it and then your mom respected it enough instead of like just being like, oh honey, just whatever. Like there's a pit in my stomach for a reason. I so respect, well, you for knowing of course, but then your mom for being like, all right. Because some moms would be like, go or, or let's just go and, and just throw everything to the wind. But neither one of those are the right answers, you know, but just like, if you know this isn't right for you, I'm not going to push it. Um, so kudos to both of you. So go ahead. That's cool. Yeah, no, I so respect my mom for that because looking back, I'm like, she spent, they spent a long time tr helping me make the decision. They paid for my undergraduate degree. Like all these things had already happened that put me on this path. But yeah, like I said, there was no valid reason for me to turn the car around. Everything had been mapped out, but it was just this gut instinct that it wasn't the right thing. Mm. So went back to Ohio, ended up needing to move in with my parents parents again, which was a whole nother, it's a whole nother story. Um, and just basically fell into a quarter life crisis. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew that it wasn't Northwestern, but that was really the only clarity I had. So I actually ended up working at a bunch of random places. I worked at a hospital for a while as a research assistant. Then I got a job at Starbucks after applying three times. So <laughs> there were a lot of... <laughs> Funny. Random things. Yeah. For whatever reason, they didn't want me. Um, and so there were a lot of random things that I did and I just kept coming back to my heart and what I felt called to do. And the only clarity I had besides the fact that Northwestern wasn't right 
was that I wanted to move to London, England which sounds really random and it was, but I had visited the UK um, about a year before because my sister was studying abroad in Europe and I fell in love with London. It was again, just a gut instinct that I was supposed to be there, um, kind of the opposite of Chicago, but I thought, felt like I was supposed to be there. And so I thought, you know what? I have nothing going on in Ohio. I really don't feel like I wanna live here anymore. I'm feeling called to be in London. It's kind of now or never. I have no responsibility. I have no clarity. And so let's just give it a shot. So I applied to grad school in the UK and actually applied for a nonfiction writing program because I wasn't able to go into psychology there because I didn't meet the prerequisites for the UK. It was different than the US. And I always knew I wanted to be a writer. So I thought, okay, I'm going to write a book. Again, sounds really random, but it'll (laughs) all all tie together. So in August 2010, I moved to the UK on a student visa, didn't know anyone. I always say I brought, you know, four suitcases and a dream and literally, you know, just started a new life in England and ended up moving into a tiny apartment, started my grad school program, kind of immersed myself in the world of online dating and ended up meeting my husband a year later. So the, the class you, the, um, the school you're in in London now is a writing school or to, to become a writer? Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I ended up writing this book about the world of online dating and my experience going out on all these dates and, and that whole thing and trying to find love and eventually meeting my husband on a cheesy dating site. So that was that your book? Happened. Your book was about all that? Yeah, it was. That's yeah. So cool. it's not, it hasn't been published. It's still, it's still, you know, gathering cob, uh, yeah. cobwebs, but Um, yeah, so, so long story short, not really that short, but I met my husband online and about, excuse me, about a year later, I discovered the world of coaching. I was still, you know, on the, I was searching for my purpose. I was searching for that thing that I was meant to do. And my friend sent me Marie Forleo's website, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners are familiar with Marie. And when I stumbled upon her work, it was one of those light bulb moments for me. And it was truly my introduction into the world of coaching as it is and and the way that I do it and the way that Marie does it. And I had learned about coaches my whole life. My dad was a business owner, so he had coaches, but I always thought coaching was you know, men in suits, carrying little three ring binders, working with corporate people. And I didn't know it could be the way it is at I Hurt My Life. So, you know, I came to this realization that I was meant to help other women who were also in quarter life crises, who didn't know what they were meant to do, but felt this calling that they were meant for more and meant for something big and just needed the clarity to figure out how to make it happen. Oh my gosh. Okay. (laughs) Wow. That's so awesome. So, um, I love Marie Forleo, read her book, everything is figure outable. And um, yeah, I, I, I listened to a lot of her podcasts as I was launching my business last year because she had a lot of just clear, concise advice about what to do, what not to do. So um, I love it. She, she's a big um, mentor of mine, even though I've never met her. Um, but so I love that you saw, so when you saw the website, were you like, I love that when you said you saw it, you, you're like, ah, this is what I'm, so, so someone else is doing something like that I could do or that, so you're looking at it like, that's what I want to do, but you, you, you can't, this is an important concept because you can't necessarily always articulate what it is. Like you kept fi- trying to find the thing for you, but you didn't know what the thing for you was until you saw it somewhere else. And if you, if you, you can't imagine it because you don't know what it is yet and you're going down all these wrong paths, you finally see it and you're like, ah, so right away you were like, everything in your being was like, this is what I need to be doing. And there's people out there that can do this and I can do that. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things I always talk about is following your jealousy. And I was super jealous of Marie. I was like, oh my gosh, she has this amazing business. She's working with these incredible clients. I love her website. And I realized I could use that jealousy to stay stuck and allow it to harm me. Or I could be like, oh, this is giving me guidance. This is the thing that I want. And so I really followed that thing that my heart was telling me was meant for me as well. And, you know, this whole story obviously is centered around me following my heart. And that's what I realized I wanted to help other women do and give themselves permission to actually do the things that might sound crazy on paper, but are actually the things that are calling them. And so obviously that's how I heart my life came to be. 
And it really, you know, started off with life coaching and then people started to see my business take off and they asked me how I did it and they wanted to know more about the process. And so now we work with mainly female entrepreneurs who know that they either want to be a coach or a consultant and they just need the support to get there. And we really focus on holistic success. For me, it's not just business strategy. It's the mindset piece. It's having the gumption to follow your heart, all those key components that make up a life and business that you love. I love that you're looking at it from a holistic point of view instead of like, I'll, I'll meet coaches and because Wayne was a coach for me and I knew exactly what I needed and he helped me, he helped, he helped me get it. I was, I've done a lot of the work and a lot of the research. So I was like, okay, I know I need this, this, and this. And he's like, okay. I, I said, I need someone to help me with these things. Got it. Okay, great. But not everyone knows what they need, but sometimes I come across coaches that just say, yeah, you need this model or this strategy. It's like, but how do you know I need that model and strategy? If I don't, if you don't know all the other parts that are going into it, um, and everyone's different, right? So maybe that strategy is not necessarily going to work for them. So I love that you're just looking at it from the from a a wider lens instead of just saying like, oh, I have this thing, and this is going what's going to make you successful. Because how you, exactly how you did it isn't not going to necessarily work for every single person um, that's trying to do um, their own thing. So that's so smart. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, in particular, in our mastermind, we always do a whole business audit and help people with like their customized plan for their business, because we know not every business is cookie cutter. Not every yeah. coach is the same. Not every person has the same desires. Yeah. So everything that we do really does start with what is in your heart? What are you feeling called to do in your life and your business? And then we can help you make it happen. Yeah. If you don't know what you're called to do, how are you supposed to make it happen? Like if you, you still have question marks around stuff, like with you with your life, like you can't, you were jumping to these different things, going where your heart was calling you, but you, you, each thing you went to wasn't the thing you wanted, but it got you closer. But until you can actually say, this is what I'm called to do, then and you, you made it happen. Cause you're like, this is it. Now I know, now I can just work at it. But if you're never, if you're not exploring that, you, you can't come to the, you can't come to the realization. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you need to have clarity, just like driving from one place to another, you need to have that roadmap. And of course there's a variety of different routes that you can take and, you know, not everyone gets there in the same exact time period, but you need to have a destination. And I think for me, you know, I always knew I was meant for something big, but it wasn't until I discovered coaching that I had more clarity around what that actually was. Did I see on your website, or do you and your husband do this together now, or is it is it a bit yeah, yeah, so about a year after building I Heart My Life, I mean, to, to put this into more tangible results, my company went from me making $442 to seven figures in my first 18 months. Wow. And so we grew really quickly, which was amazing. Um, there's, again, a lot more to the story than that. But what happened about a year into it was my husband was able to leave his job as a graphic designer and actually got clarity around what he wanted to do, and that was coaching. So he certified with Brendan Burchard, which is actually how we met Wayne, because they were in a program okay. together. Yeah, and he became a high performance coach. And so now within our company, he coaches all of our students on elements of high performance. And we actually have other coaches as well who work with us. So again, it's that holistic success where we're bringing a variety of different minds and expertise together awesome. to work with our students. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds like you have like a nice, I was going to say like a magic potion, but it's not a magic potion. Like you, you were thoughtful about what you created because it's um, what, everything you're saying is so true about how business works and how people's minds work. So of course it's working, right? Not a surprise. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I think I knew that I wanted to be the face of the company and the head of the company, but it didn't need to be all me. And it didn't, I, I didn't want it to be about all me. There are other people who are better at Facebook ads and high performance and other things that I'm not an expert in. And I hated the fact that when I got into certain programs, I still needed to go outside of the program to find different mentors. So I wanted to bring everyone under one umbrella for our clients. So they knew that they would be working with vetted coaches and consultants and experts who would be able to help them in different areas of their life and business. So smart. So smart. That's awesome. Good for you. Um, okay. So tell me, I'm looking at the questions. Um, when you were going from thing to thing, and I'm not saying that I'm just like painting the picture, not knowing this isn't right for me, but this is, I'll do this next thing. I'm going to go to London. Do I want to write? I think I'm going to write. When you were doing all that, what was keeping you motivated? 
and from quitting and saying, oh, I'm never going to figure it out and happy along the way, like so that you could eventually build this business. What were some of the things that were keeping you in that mindset? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think I've always had this internal drive around feeling like I'm meant for something. I'm meant to have some impact. And that has always been super motivating to me. And there was a period in my business when I first started where I literally had 54 no's in a row. So I was getting on sales call after sales call after sales call and had 54 people say no to me. Wow. And so I honestly, one of the, my saving graces was working with mentors and coaches who could teach me what I could do better. And they helped motivate me to keep going. They saw something special in me and they knew that if I just kept going and I maybe made some tweaks to my sales process or did some more work on my mindset, then I would eventually get there. And so I think for me, I just made my success non-negotiable. And I knew that if I just kept going, I would eventually figure it out and go to the next level and get those results. And I'm not saying that it was easy, but of I just- course. Yeah. I fortified my mindset and really just, again, it was focused on the big picture vision. I knew that my desires were dropped in. I, I have that core belief. Like there's a reason why I'm being called to do this thing. And so I'm going to trust that. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. They're like, oh no, I got it wrong. It's not working. Well, it's not that it's not working. It's just, you need to give it more time or you need to work with somebody to help you or, you know, whatever it is, there's no one size fits all approach, but you need to need to, above all else, you need to trust that what's calling you is meant for you. I love that. Trust that what's calling you is meant for you. So true. Um, I love also what you said about, I wrote it down. Um, like make your, make your success non-negotiable and, and the 54 no's. So I don't know. I, I don't know if you have written a book, a different book or whatever, but you should be writing a book about all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, it's back there. That okay. pink thing right there. Oh, okay. This is, a, this is not the, it's a separate book from the one you're It's a separate about. book. It's called I Heart My Life. And it's, oh, okay. about my, it's about my story since starting the business. Okay. And it's for driven entrepreneurs. Okay. Awesome. Because I was, everything you're saying. I'll send you a copy. It should be in a book. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Um, but the, the 54 no's, I was talking to my husband about this because I'm writing my first book. It's coming out in January. And it's like, it, it's just, it's done. Like the writing part's done. There's just layout and doing all that other stuff with the publisher. And I'm like, what if it isn't what I thought it was going to be? What if it's not received the same way? And he's like, so you don't have a choice. You're, you're, you're continuing. Like you've gone this far, you're, you're going to get out into the world. And if I had said months ago, if it helps one person, it was worth writing. And I loved writing it. Um, he's like, and he's like, and I love, found out I love writing, which I didn't think I was going to love it. I really just wanted to tell these lessons. I didn't necessarily want to write them. I was like, I just want everyone to know about them. Once I started writing, I realized how much I loved it. And I want to write more. And he's like, so you'll just go and you'll write more and you'll just keep going. And you have to trust. He was telling me, you know, this last week, you have to trust the process and not give up. And he said, and if it was easy, Julie, everyone would do it. And there's people all over the world that didn't give up like you. Perfect example. 54 knows if you had stopped at 53 or 54, if you stopped at 54, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. Eventually someone said yes. And then someone else said yes. Right. And then someone else said yes. And all you really need is one yes to keep going. But sometimes when you don't have it, or you're not getting the feedback you want or the results you want. You think, well, maybe I've made a mistake. I mean, it comes back to like you were saying with your desires and in your heart. If you know in your heart that this is the right thing for you, it, it, it can't be a no all the way. It's just maybe a no right now. Exactly. Yeah. And I think you just have to validate yourself as well. Like you don't have to wait for the outside source or the world to give you a yes. Like keep telling yourself yes, that you're meant for this because that's really the most important yes, you know, above all else anyway. I love that. Keep telling yourself yes, because same with like, we have kids, um, our boys are 18 and 23, but they're both in that realm. Like one just graduated and has a job and all that, but the other one's on his way to, you know, into college. And it's like, um, you're going to get, you're going to have doubts. I mean, especially at the ages they are or whatever, but it's, it's like that, that constant reminder that, well, of course you're going to fail. Of course it's going to be, you're going to make bad, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to go down the wrong path. You're going to change your mind. That's, that's a given. But just, are you changing your mind for the right reasons? Are you changing your mind because it's too hard? Are you changing your mind because this is not a good fit and you made a mistake? Like you said, I did the same thing when I was in college. I realized immediately within two or three months, I'm like, what am I doing? This is not the right degree for me. Like it was so yeah. clear in my head and even my dad tried to talk me out of it. I said, dad, this is, I'm good at this, but this is not my calling. I can see the people over here. That's their calling. They're phenomenal. I'm not phenomenal. So, um, it's really cool when you can figure it out younger, which is why I'm doing the work I'm doing because 
it's nice that I can talk about it now and it's easy for me and you have your business and obviously it's not easy that you have your business, but what got you there, all, all those good lessons. But um, wouldn't it be cool if people could do that? At, like you said, they're, um, like you're helping people at their, what are you calling it, the quarter life crisis? What, uh -huh. Yeah, helping them then instead of when they're 50, like 50, 50, that's me, 51's fine. I mean, go ahead and do some good things then. But wouldn't it be cool if you could have left, led the first 25 years of your life or those 25 to 50? The way you're doing it now instead of just like slugging along and not knowing what you're doing and then oh i could have done this 25 years ago no exactly it's yeah there's so many things you know even now i wish i learned and wish i was taught growing up and i think in particular we're not actually taught to connect with our hearts most of the time we're making decisions from our head and what feels logical or what we're told we should do and so i think that's one of the things more than anything else that i love working with women on is just really connecting because your heart leads you to your purpose and yet we're not tuning in in the way that we could be and when we do we're told like we shouldn't be because that's what men are, you know, usually we're, if you're in the business world and there's not a lot of women that, you know, like you're told, you see this other model and you're like, but that doesn't feel right. Well, it doesn't feel right because you're a woman and that's, you know, you're, you have more intuition, you have all these other tools and skills um, that you could be using, but you're, you're, either you're shut off from them or you're told them not, to, you're told not to pay attention to them because yeah, it's not the way exactly. business is done. And that's, and it's such a disservice. Okay. So final question for you. Um, is there anything you wish you'd learned earlier in your life or your career that you could just go back and undo or redo? Um, I mean, I think it's something that's ongoing for me is not allowing myself to go to a place of worry and just trusting the process and trusting that whatever is meant to happen, it's unfolding and it's available to me. I think so often we do get into our head and we worry about why it's not happening fast enough or why it's so hard or, you know, why I've experienced this challenge. And so really just what it boils down to is trusting, trusting life and trusting the process. And I believe everything that's happened, you know, it sounds, it sounds very cheesy, but I do believe that everything that's happened and everything I've been through was for a reason. Yep. And I really didn't need to worry about anything. I didn't need to, you know, freak out when something didn't happen the way I expected. I could just really be in trust around the whole process. I love that. Such an important lesson. One we're always, I'm especially always trying to teach our kids because I, I had no one telling me, trust it. It's like, oh, just work harder, work harder, work an extra job, just go to, go to more school. It's like, instead of, instead of really just trusting that you don't have to, of course you have to work hard, but you don't have to kill yourself to undo something you thought was good, supposed to go a certain way. It's like, oh, it went that way for a reason. You're, you were meant to learn that lesson or find that thing earlier or whatever. That's a great one. I totally wish I would have learned that one earlier too. I'm really good at it now. I'm so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not perfect at it, but it's way easier now knowing what I know to sit back and say, okay, then I don't like it, but I know that it's like this way for a reason. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see what it is. And then it almost makes it kind of like a game, like, all right, that wasn't it. What is it? Like what's around the corner? There's something else here. And then I get, I, now I get more excited about the other thing that's going to come new because I am trusting the process. It's more fun. To live, yeah. yeah. It's more fun to live that way than to be like, what does that mean? Well, what does this mean? What does that mean? Which is how I basically grew up, <laughs> you know, totally. uh, and do yeah. it all. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's been so fun talking to you. I wrote down a lot of um, cool things that you said because you said a lot of cool things. So um, I'm <laughs> going to be quoting some of the stuff um, you said. And I love, so talk about your book. So how can people work with you and find you and get your stuff and connect with you? Yeah. So if you go to iheartmylife.com, you'll see all of the information you need. We have a variety of different programs. We have a membership. We have a program for new coaches called iHeart Coaching. And then we have a mastermind for established business owners. And we love working with women who are driven. They know they're meant for something big and just want the support to get there. So like I said, we work in a holistic way, which I think is really imperative because it's I Heart My Life for a reason. It's not just I Heart My Business. It's the whole package. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we love working with women in that capacity. And I'm also on Instagram at I heart my life or at I am Emily Williams. Um, I'd love to see you there. And awesome. yeah, any way anyone wants to reach out, I would love to hear from them. I love that you have that name in your website, that it's meaningful instead of just about being a business or whatever. It's like, yeah, it's about your life and your business is just a part of it. And um, how awesome to be thinking about everything in your life that could be better and not just this little piece because it's all connected anyways even if you only focus on another thing 
you get all these other results. So that's awesome. Well, good for you. Good for the work you're doing. And, and congratulations on following your heart and um, keeping everyone else doing the same thing. We, we need it. We need it more than ever. Um, and I wish we had all of this 25 years ago when I was trying to follow my heart. <laughs> You've got it now. Thank you so much exactly. for the honor yeah. of being here. Aw, thanks, Emily. Take care. It's great talking to you. Sure. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for listening. If you love this content, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts or whichever platform you found us on. You can get all my social media links in the description below. Help us keep the momentum going so that every person can live their lives happily doing work they love. 